This morning I opened my email, hoping to get a letter from an old girlfriend that dumped me in high school. As I opened my laptop while sitting on the john having a coffee, I thought that the odds of this happening were not that great. High school was 40 years ago, so do the math. No emails, nothing at all, but wait. It is a newsletter from Bloomberg. I clicked it. There was an interesting story about Warren Buffett, so I started to read it. But when I started to read the second paragraph, I noticed the script started fading to white. Just then a pop-up came up and asked me to subscribe. It looked too expensive for my budget, but there was an alternative window that said you can continue to read the article just by registering. So I did. I spent about 15 minutes figuring it out. Once I was registered, I signed in and started reading the article. Guess what? It only let me read one more paragraph. Then a message said, your free read is over, you need to subscribe. I was instantly furious. They made me go through all that effort. Then they tricked me and teased me with one more paragraph, when I distinctly remember that they said I could read the whole article and receive free newsletters. After some investigation, I found out that anyone that signs up for the newsletter gets one paragraph of a newsletter article. Then the whole works just stops and fades to white. Then annoying pop-ups start bugging you to subscribe. I hate when big corporations jerk people my me around. So I figured I would search the internet and find out what people actually felt about Bloomberg. So I did. Then I produced this podcast. Enjoy! The staff of RadioAI.ca performed a small survey of 20 individuals that have done business with Bloomberg. These were the preliminary results. Overall, the reviews of Bloomberg are mixed. Some praise its economic news coverage and website usability, highlighting its value for staying informed. However, others criticize its subscription practices, citing unexpected charges, difficulty in canceling subscriptions, and poor customer service. Complaints range from lack of transparency regarding fees to unresponsive support and automatic renewals. There are also mentions of dissatisfaction with the quality of content, including political bias and repetitive articles. Despite some positive aspects, such as informative reporting, these negative experiences seem to overshadow Bloomberg's reputation for many users. Okay, mixed bag. Now I am going to compare to Nicola's results. She conducted a much larger review of 40 individuals. Here is her summary. My group was larger and more representative than Harrison's. This is what I found. The reviews of Bloomberg are overwhelmingly negative, with consistent complaints about deceptive sales practices, poor customer service and biased reporting. Customers report issues such as unexpected charges, difficulty cancelling subscriptions and unresponsive support. Many users express frustration with the quality of content, including biased political coverage and excessive advertising. Some even accuse Bloomberg of being a mouthpiece for pharmaceutical companies, rather than focusing on financial news. Overall, these reviews suggest that Bloomberg fails to meet customer expectations and lacks transparency in its business practices. We now have two independent groups of Bloomberg reviewers. Well, there you have it. It isn't just me that gets treated like shit, so that makes me feel better. Sometimes I feel people single me out for abuse. Maybe it's my personality, or maybe my tribal face tattoos piss them off. It's good to know I am not the only one that gets shit on. One thing I learned in high school was be objective. The truth can only be found by objective research. So here are some actual comments so you can hear word for word what our survey participants are saying. Without notifying me that my Bloomberg News subscription was up for renewal or what the cost would be for the upcoming year, the company debited my Amex card for 415 When I became aware of the charge to my card, I immediately contacted Bloomberg and told them I did not want to renew the subscription. Their reply, ha ha, you can't change it now, so now I'm stuck for another year. Given my profession, I have many new subscription services. Not one has ever pulled a stunt like this. It was a pure gotcha play. I find Bloomberg's actions to be unscrupulous and unethical. I would never do any kind of business with them again. They are not to be trusted. I would caution everyone about how they operate. As an aside, Amex wasn't helpful either. They didn't back their cardholder. They just relied on the fine print Bloomberg sent them. They didn't want to rock the boat with a big business relationship. Bottom line, there's no one out there supporting the little guy. 
our only recourse, don't use them. I signed up for a trial and canceled well before the trial ended, only after a few days of use. I just wasn't using it enough to justify the monthly cost. Somehow, Bloomberg created two accounts for me, so canceling once wasn't enough, apparently. I had no idea I had two accounts, nor that it was even possible to have two accounts, and I was suddenly charged, three months later, $34.99. I called them to dispute this charge and kindly requested a refund. They refused to refund me. I spoke to a supervisor, and they escalated it twice after I kept calling back, only to be told the same thing via email and phone. This was their mistake, not mine. They told me themselves my last login was June right before I canceled my first subscription, yet they, they wouldn't refund me. Why would I sign up and pay for the same thing twice? Total scam. I had to dispute the charge with my bank and file a claim. Pathetic that a company this big didn't make this right. When a site lures you in, then blocks you from seeing the page to sell you crap, it's a hard sell. GFY Bloomberg, what a stupid way to try to get a new customer. You're blocked now from all Google search results. Don't worry, Bloomberg. I won't try to see your pages and useless news again. Same dreadful experience as many below with subscription and dishonest slash deceitful practices by Bloomberg. You can refer a complaint to the below for investigation and resolution. New York City Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. Massive scammers. Do not subscribe to anything with them. They will debit your card even if you canceled. I was really shocked to see that this company was a bunch of thieves, you are warned. I opted for the trial one-year subscription at the trial price. They charged me for the full price. I tried to reach out via email and chat. They emailed back and said it has been resolved. What? No one reached out to me. How is it resolved? Very, very dishonest practice. This is a garbage content company when it comes to non-business affairs reporting perhaps one of the most biased and left-leaning news outlets that's out there. They seem to blur the lines between fact-based neutral news and biased op-eds to the point where their reporting is almost irrelevant. Corporate gossip, grapevine talk, and rumours based on unidentified people familiar with the matter galore. Their coverage of emerging Asian economies such as India is clearly propagandist and far left-leaning, devoid of any real insight into the workings of that part of the world, and based on content developed by opposition party apologists. Absolutely the worst customer service of any company I've ever dealt with in my entire life. I was basically told that I was a liar, and that I did not actually cancel my subscription when I said that I canceled my subscription, and therefore they refused to refund the $1.70. $1.35 a month for their ridiculous online subscription. I just read an article about Biden's tax plan for EVs. It was so bad I couldn't even finish it. This publication is just another rag now. I've experienced appalling dishonesty, fraud, and ignorance from Bloomberg. They quietly extended my low-cost trial subscription that took ridiculously long and resubscribed me to one at almost $1.35 without informing me. When I complained, they ignored my complaints each time, changed their email address, and continued to ignore my complaints. The financial regulator and ombudsman services should really get interested in Bloomberg, which I'll ensure happens. A dinosaur company when it comes to their terminals and financial data products, which they charge heavily. Customer care is zero and the terms are extremely hard. That is, you have to commit for a year at least. Bloomberg auto subscription model is designed to benefit only Bloomberg. Very deceptive business practices that one would not expect from a company of this magnitude. Their streaming lags, and there are too many ads, and it's impossible to remove credit card details. Or cancel your subscription. I had to close my credit card just to get out of this trap. This is a terrible scam service. They have you subscribe for a year and then automatically renew at $415 a year. Once you get the bill on the credit card, they say it's too late for a refund until a year later. Avoid! Holy crap, doesn't look good for old Bloomberg. I think it's time to sick our in-house legal expert on these bad boys. Judgey, got a comment? Judgey Judgerston, February 25th, 2024, Bloomberg LP, 731 Lexington Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. Dear Sir, Madam, Re, notice of legal action against Bloomberg LP, I am writing on behalf of Archie Corallo, who has retained our firm to address the egregious misconduct perpetrated by Bloomberg LP. 
Bloomberg. It has come to our attention that Bloomberg's business practices have resulted in significant harm to numerous consumers, including our client. Our investigation into Bloomberg's operations has revealed a disturbing pattern of deceptive sales tactics, unfair billing practices, and abhorrent customer service. Such conduct not only breaches the trust placed in Bloomberg by its customers, but also violates various consumer protection laws. The numerous complaints received by our firm and echoed throughout various consumer reviews paint a dire picture of Bloomberg's disregard for ethical standards and legal obligations. From unauthorized charges to refusal of refunds, Bloomberg's actions demonstrate a blatant disregard for the rights and well-being of its customers. Our client Archie Carvalho has been directly impacted by Bloomberg's misconduct, suffering financial losses and emotional distress as a result. Despite repeated attempts to resolve the matter amicably, Bloomberg has failed to acknowledge its wrongdoing or offer appropriate restitution. Therefore, we demand immediate action from Bloomberg to rectify the harm caused to our client and all affected consumers. Specifically, we demand one, full reimbursement of all unauthorized charges and fees levied against our client's account. Two, an apology from Bloomberg acknowledging the harm caused by its deceptive practices. Three, implementation of comprehensive reforms to ensure transparency, fairness, and accountability in all future business dealings. Four, assurance that our client's subscription is canceled without further charges or complications. Please be advised that failure to comply with these demands within specified time frame will result in our firm pursuing all available legal remedies against Bloomberg, including but not limited to filing a lawsuit seeking damages, injunctive relief, and punitive measures. We trust that Bloomberg will take this matter seriously and act swiftly to address the concerns raised herein. Our client and all affected consumers deserve nothing less than full restitution and accountability for Bloomberg's reprehensible conduct. Should you have any questions or wish to discuss this matter further, please do not hesitate to contact our office at RadioAI.ca. Sincerely, Judgey Judgerston. Like the bailiff says, if you don't like the outcome of a business transaction, don't take it into your own hands. Take it to court.